Hi, I'm John Termel and I'm going into the uh, Best Western Hotel where the Brantford Chamber of Commerce are holding a mayoral candidates debate to which I have not been invited. So, typical fair stuff. We'll see what's going to happen. If you need any help, Nancy's here. Hi, Sean. Fancy seeing you here. Oh, I'm always here, aren't I? Oh, yeah. So, are you guys going to get me the chance to participate in this debate? Am I up there? No. That's right, eh? What did you do? Did you not put your, your, your name in? Is that what happened? Just go check with the election. Be sure. I never got an invite, of course. Just like last time, I never got an invite. Chamber? That's right. But at the last, I beat him up until they let me on. Okay, that was a rare victory in that election. You, per, you persevered until they let you on. Yes. Yes. Okay. It was gonna. It was gonna take more than uh, they were willing to do to. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and no chair for me. So why didn't they invite me? I have an email. Oh, come on, not conspiracy. They did that last election, okay, you too. Tell me why didn't they invite you? Well, they didn't invite me last time put either. A camera on yourself if you're gonna... All right. <laughs> they didn't invite me last time either. Why not? Why not? I don't know. I mean, uh, the women's university group said it was because no independent candidates allowed. That was in the that was the excuse used so was then. The, like, for the provincial. provincial. Then the uh, Susan Hess, principal of Pauline Johnson, they got all the students together in one place and then banned me because I might speak about marijuana. That made the newspaper. Yeah, but you talked about teen suicide the last time we did here, so they PJ. Said give them jobs, you'd have less teen suicide, and I mean it. Give them bus bucks jobs, you'll have less teen suicide, right? That'll freak anybody. <laughs> that always come on, me. come on. Give them jobs, there'll be less suicides. So, so how come I didn't get invited to this debate? Where's the organizer? I'm the organizer, Mr. My, Turmel. We've my met dear. Charlene Nicholson, my board president, Barry English. Yes. All right. Hi there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Can I tape us? Why wasn't I invited to this debate? You weren't invited to this debate because you're on record as saying that you're only interested in being mayor for a day. Oh, come on. That's a, give me a break. Give me a break. That's the excuse you're going to use. Termel joked he only wanted to be mayor long enough to program the computer and you took it seriously. That's the one I'm sticking with. That's the one he's sticking with. Well, add a chair, please. That's not fair. Come on, candidate. Speak up. Time is right now. Your balls are on the line. Be men. Say, hey, it ain't fair. Add a chair. Poetic. Come on now. Say it. You have a weird way with words. Come on now. Add a chair. What's hard? I said I want to be a candidate for a day. Let me tell you what I can do in a day. Come on now. Add a chair. That's a really, really lame excuse. Actually, it's up to the organizing committee who participates in well, they, it's not You better candidates. call them up real fast. You're Come on. This ain't them. fair. Pardon? I said you're speaking with them. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. I have to ask you to one, keep your voice down. Oh, okay. Well, I'm trying to let everybody know we have a problem here. Sure. How loud is it too loud? If you cease to disturb anyone else here in the area, and you're becoming too loud, then I'm going to ask, ask you to leave. Okay. All right, so. All right. Okay. All right. So. Oh, as soon as someone says they're disturbed by your loudness. All right. Well, all right, boys, have some balls. Come on, stand up right now. Hey. I'm excluded from the debate because they say I joked. I only wanted to be mayor for a day, so that's the reason they're saying did I'm you say off. You, did you say you only wanted to be mayor for a day? I said I could reprogram the computer in a day. That's what I meant to say as a joke, but still, you think that's a good guys, reason well, to keep me off? Stand these guys, up. These guys are these guys are serious business. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is serious business. Well, you think I'm not serious? Say it. Well, I don't know. Are Come you on, serious? you don't understand how bus bucks can create jobs for kids? Are you serious, John? Yeah. Well, if you're serious, you don't understand. Well, you think I'm not? No, no, no. If you're serious, yeah. John, then you don't need to be elected to do it. Do you? Oh, aren't you a brilliant person for your lack of balls? Stand up and tell people Figure that I got a right to participate are, too. Are you trying to insult me, John? Is I'm that saying that I would have the balls to stand up for you. I would have the balls to stand up for you. I stood up for Mark Little the other night when he got one question all night. Come on, stand up, boys. You all say we don't play and they will change the rules and add a chair. Have some nerve. Jesus. Come on. 
Come on, let's hear it. All candidates get to speak. Add a chair, add a chair. Come on now. Mark, add a chair, add a chair. You especially, you're stuck with me and Winston next week. Add a chair, add a chair. Come on now, add a chair, add a chair. Can we have a little chant? Add a chair, add a chair. A little democracy in brand. What a lame excuse. I joked I could fix it in a day. Excuse me if I'm a super engineer and they're a bunch of nothings. Come on now. Look at those candidates. Sitting there, absolutely they're gonna let me, they're gonna let them exclude me from the debate. Come on, John. John, speak up. Say all candidates should have the right to speak. Speak up. Come on, speak up. Say all candidates should have the right to speak. At a chair. Leadership, you see it here. <laughs> Come on, Christopher, you look bad. Come on, Joel. Come on. I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna be allowed to speak. You're gonna let me no. There's my idea about bus bucks. No, eh? That's like I say, the adults are dumbed down. This is for the kids. <sighs> not interested, eh? Put kids to work shoveling the snow for bus tickets. Duh, not interested. Come on now. Come on, boys. You guys gonna let them do this to me? Their excuse was I joked I could fix it in a day. That was it. Come on, Chris, be a man. Come on, Chris, be a man. Stand up for me. Yeah, yeah, I know it's hard, eh? Yeah. What negotiates? I'm not on. What? Yeah. Jesus, come with me. Show me how to talk nice. Show me how to talk nice. Come here. How do you talk nice to people to say you don't play? How do you talk nice to people to say you're not on? You think talking nice is going to help? Can you make a promise that okay, you'll stay within a realm of discussion? You Did found you I've way? been straying so far? Well, you called Jesus an account. Well, <laughs> I got no right to my own exit, Jesus. No, that's my favorite part of the whole thing. No, no, that's not an excuse. No, no, no. You guys got to stand up together. You got to show some bone here. Come on. Bless sir. John Turmel joked he could fix it in a day. John Turmel joked he could fix it in a day. That's the reason I can't have a chair. Yes, sir. What a lame excuse. And you're going to stand by that to let them cheat me? Remember, any time you get that's mine, I'm going to bitch about later. That's cheating, and I don't take cheating lightly. That's my time you're using. <laughs> Chris wants me to be nice to the organizers. Go speak nicely to them. Maybe that'll help. You think sweet talking to the organizers is going to help? What do you think, John? No, I. My work. <laughs> they want me to sweet talk to the organizers. What should I do, Neil? You know, what should I do different than the others to sweet talk the organizers? Hey, Chris, tell me what to say. Geez, you let me down, Chris. Yes, sir. Yes. Not fair, not fair. Undemocratic. Not fair. You're going to stand up and say I should have the right to have a chair? You have the right to have a table. No, 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 no. That's like not the issue. No, no. The chair. The chair. That's the issue, my dear. Chairs. Yeah, you're going to be a leader? Chair. Should you let. Do I get on the show? On they're, they're not letting me participate. Oh, today? They're not letting me participate. No, and I, personally, I agree that you should have the same opportunity as we do. To have a chair. Yes. Well, to speak? Yeah. I, yeah, I'm sorry, yes. Well, that's the issue. They're not yes. going to let me on. Oh, okay. okay, thanks. You're the only I one. Mean, You're the only one. As far as I'm concerned, that's what I know, I know. Thank you. You're in the race. All right, one. One with balls and all the candidates. The only candidate with balls in the Brantford election. Yes, sir. Yay. Diane Austin, the only candidate with balls enough to speak up for me. Finally. 
Yes, sir. Diane Austin, the only candidate with the balls to speak up for me. Diane Austin. <laughs> Diane Austin, the only candidate with the balls to speak up for me. Diane Austin, the only one with the balls. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. As the men sit cowering in their corners. Cowering, yes, sir. <laughs> Every corner filled by a cowering candidate. Yes, sir. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. Not one man, not one man with the balls to back me up. Not one man in the bunch. Not one man. One lady's got all the testosterone for the whole group. <laughs> What a lame excuse. I joked I could reprogram the city's computer in a day. That's why I can't have a chair. Yes, sir. Strategy session. What should we wish for? Ah, bad luck, bad luck. Bad luck. I'm being excluded from the debate. Isn't that fair? Everybody but me. And only the woman had the balls to stand up for me. I'm uh, being excluded from the debate. And only the woman candidate had the balls to stand up for my right to speak. Isn't that sad? You, hey, hey, go find some balls before you talk to me again. All right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus. Imagine that. A whole crew. Sitting there, they're gonna walk up, take my time so I can call them cheats tomorrow night on that on Rogers TV. You gotta be a nuts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you took my time and you're a cheat. I didn't take anybody. You had took advantage of me. Oh, wasn't it fun? I got to score voters and Tremel didn't. Yes, sir. Fun, eh? Scoring voters, answering questions when your opponent's being knocked out of the game by the referee. Fun, eh? That's the way to win, Mike. Yes, sir. Not standing up, no way. How sad. Yes, sir. Uh, the candidates. You know, and it's the moderators who get you guys all beat up over this, you know. But, but if you, if you stood up, you know, what can I say? Every time the guys ever stood up in the past, they backed down. You know, one lady standing up, not enough testosterone. Testosterone stayed home. Yes, sir. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, big money. Can't piss them off, eh? So there's my, there are my gutless opponents. Mr. Kalman, yes, ready to fight for the underprivileged. <laughs> there's Mr. Friel, former mayor, hiding in his corner. And of course, Mr. Slass Alderman hasn't said a word. Yes, sir. Discussing important things, no doubt. And of course, Mr. Little. And he's going to be stuck with me in a live debate next week, next Thursday, in the home serenity place with me and Winston Ferguson. <laughs> Winston won't show up, and I'll get him all to myself. Anyway, so what a bunch of wimps. Holy jeez. And I got to sit there, and I'm going to have to have the cops throw me outside. You know, son of a gun. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I guess they're having difficulty waiting for me to see what can happen because I'm probably going to take a seat on stage and say, come on, out of the table. Oh, no cheer for you? <laughs> okay, get ready for that one. Yes, sir. Well, it's certainly not what you'd call a stellar crowd at the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce, Brantford. Linking economic prosperity with quality of life, but not paying kids with bus tickets to shovel the snow. These are the winners who decided they were going to ban me. You know, because I joked I could fix the system in a day, and I'd be playing poker by that night. What a lame excuse. Anyway, I got them. What a bunch of crooks, straight from Russia. Anyway. <laughs> 
nice server. And Littell, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, things are past normal. It's supposed to start at five. Geez, I guess they're waiting for to see what's going to happen. They don't like me standing around wondering if I'm going to go stand on stage or not, you know? Like I usually do. They don't know what I'm going to do. They probably need more cops. Oh, well, let's see. So, how we got... Gee, you know, there's enough room for another chair. One more chair. For democracy's sake. They do have room for another chair. Just look. You know, right there. No, no, no. They're gonna they're gonna go through with it. They got their excuse. Termel said that he could fix it in a day. Therefore he shouldn't have a right to tell us how. You know what? I could explain how I could fix it in a day. Yes, sir. There they are. And of course my wimp candidate opponents. None stood up for me. Not one. Except the lady. <laughs> no testosterone out of their male testicles, that's for sure. Geez, you know, what are they going to do when I sit down in one of the chairs? Ooh, it's not going to cause a stir. As I always do. Yeah, that's true. You need your picture of the cop taking me away. We haven't had it yet. Well, you just go back to the other elections. Four times in ten debates, it's a record. The David Levac election. Christ, he even helped him. Anyway, another story. <laughs> yes, sir, he tricked me into thinking that they were bringing up a table for me to participate. And it was just to quiet me down till the cops showed up. Dave oh, Levac. Yeah, Dave Levac. Help the cops, help the moderators take his opponent away. Dave Levac. So let's mention what he did. Old history. <laughs> yeah, time to remind them. I'm the only excluded candidate from the debate. Yes, sir. The old seven out of eight candidate democracy. Seven out of eight candidates allowed. One here can't participate. Yes, sir. Chamber of Commerce running the debate. Yes, sir. Everybody thought they're crooks and now they know for sure. Yes, sir. Running a crooked debate, the Chamber of Commerce. Good, thanks. See ya. It's right there. It is. The local Chamber of Commerce running this crooked debate. Yes, sir. The elite. <laughs> Brantford's elite. Yes, sir. Seven out of eight candidates. Democracy in Brantford. I've been excluded from the debate. No chair for me. Daisy for mayor. Yes, sir. Real leadership. Real leadership. <laughs> yes, sir. The city needs leadership. The city needs new leadership. There are the leaders. Leaders of tomorrow. The leaders of tomorrow. Oh, got pens. Oh, t-shirts. <laughs> if you go to his website, his big stories are, oh, we put up a lot of signs. <laughs> Going after the gambler vote. The guy's trying to pick the winner. Entertaining my constituency. <laughs> Who are all these people? Oh, they're his workers, his clappers. Are you clappers? What we do is something happens to the president. Geez, are you guys Chris's clappers? You're his official clapper section? Yes, sir. We're here to clap for Chris. Yes, sir. If you're lucky Termel ain't in the debate, I might make fun of him. Talk about no testosterone. <laughs> and of course, they got to have an officer here for sure. You knew it. Yes, sir. Elections in Brantford need police. That's true. Come on, just one extra chair, you know? I mean, ah, oh, geez, you could put this one chair, ah, oh, such a perfect fit, right in there, you know? Ah, oh, one chair extra. What's hard, you know? Hey, that's my chair. I'm gonna have to say this one only once, okay? 
please don't be doing anything that is going to create such a disturbance that I have to remove it. Like this? Yes, like this. The chair is meant there, and it stays there. We need another chair up there, though. That's the best one. Yes, sir. Seven chairs, eight candidates. I'm the candidate who's being excluded from the debate. Chamber of Commerce rules. Seven out of eight's enough. Next time it's out the door, you know that, eh? Yes, sir. There's the man who did it to me. Mr. Go back to Russia. Mr. Went to school at Moscow University. Mr. Democracy. Yes, sir. Chamber of Commerce. Big money. Yes, sir. They don't want to have kids working for bus bucks. No, sir. They're mainly loan sharks and bankers and financiers and not worried about kids getting jobs with bus bucks. And I'm the candidate who's been excluded from the debate. I'm number eight. They won't let me play. Chamber of Commerce rules. Ah, oh, there's this clapper section. I gotta get this one. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. There's a section of clappers. All right. Come on, just add a chair. Don't be so corrupt. Don't be so undemocratic. Just add a chair. Just add a chair. Don't be so undemocratic. Come on. Add a chair. What a gutless man. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mr. Sless. Yeah. Hide, Mr. Sless, in your corner. Sir, so everybody else gets a chance to set up their table. Everybody else gets a chance to set up their stuff. Everybody else. Yes, sir. Everybody got a table. Yeah, yeah. What a bunch of crooks. Is this going to be interesting? Oh, what a bunch of crooks. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, come on, just one right there, right there. That would be the perfect place to put it, you know? Enough room for all of us, easily. Look at all that space between those chairs. They could easily, 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 easily squeeze us together. Yes, sir. Logistics. They can't handle the chairs. What a bunch of... Yes, sir. Brantford Chamber of Commerce. Brantford Big Money. Yes, sir. What a lame excuse. You said you were going to do this. Hey, by the way, did you know that it is your quote about yes. me... Uh, Pop fixing the He's program right. in the morning. Nice That's the reason they're using to keep me off That's the debate. Yep. That's <laughs> right, eh? <laughs> they, they figured because you took it seriously. You're going to change your mind? Yes, Let me have are. a chair. Yes, we are. Sir. Oh, thank you then. Yes, we are. Sir. Thank you then. All right. We're going to, we're going to we'll ask you to, to follow the rules. Oh, is, yeah, no problem. Which is two minutes. We're asking each can we're giving each candidate two minutes to speak, and then I understand. And then you're welcome. And then All right. Not another word about it. Okay. okay. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. Let's go. Now I got five. All right. They're letting me play. That's the September. They're letting me play. Well, again, good evening and welcome. My name is Barry English. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce of Brantford Brant, and we are delighted to be hosting this debate. A trade show event on behalf of our 780 chamber members that collectively employ more than 25,000 people in our community. Due, the, due to the number of candidates for the office of mayor, the format for this evening is somewhat non-traditional. You, you will have the opportunity to network with the candidates and others in attendance and now we'll offer the candidates an opportunity to make a two-minute statement. The order of speaking was determined by a random draw. Following the statements, the candidates will be positioned around the room in their assigned area and are available for questions and discussions. Your opportunity to grill them. The timekeeper for the statements this evening is Nancy Billard. There she is. And she will indicate when you have 30 seconds remaining to speak and when you have reached the maximum time allowed. I will ask the candidates 
and members of the audience to adhere to the format and exercise the decorum that, that is needed for this evening to succeed. Thank you. And now we'll get to the candidates. The first candidate to speak to you this evening is John Tremel. Well, I'm known as Johnny Engineer Turmel, and I was one of the first people who started the LET software, local employment trading software. But in a nutshell, it would do the accounting if we were to pay our unemployed youth and, uh, with bus tickets. Two dollar bus tickets, 12 bucks an hour, you call them bus bucks. Now, I mean, this is not new. I mean, in Africa right now, people are transferring cell phone minutes by their phone, texting, saying transfer 10 minutes from my account to his because they don't have bank accounts. They transfer phone cards in Arabia because they don't have bank accounts. But the blanks aren't getting, the blanks aren't getting any interest. Well, we could be doing the same thing with bus bucks to pay the students. Now, they could build up their credits. When I went to Europe 10 years ago, I stayed 39 nights out of 40, and I paid with an IOU for a night back in Canada, worth five hours, or 60 bus bucks. So, if I were elected mayor, I'd pay the students bus bucks to shovel the snow after the plows go by, and then I would take those bus bucks, put them in a credit account that they can see, then they can travel too. And for 60 bus bucks, they can get a night in Paris or Cologne or all over the planet. I've got 58 countries with time banks right now. So alternate currencies are doable. And I walked up to a few businesses now, and I said, look, will you give a database of youth and unemployed a 10% discount? They all went, yeah. I said, well, then don't do that. Don't need the discount. Take to 10% in bus bucks. And I got three so far to say, yeah. So I'm asking you guys, will you take 10% bus bucks in your stores to reward the students who are going to be shoveling your snow? Oh, by the way, James, Rogers is going to make you take your button off tomorrow night. Well, that's okay. Get ready to bow. Diane, Rogers is going to make you take your button off tomorrow night. Chris, Rogers is going to make you take your button off tomorrow night. I'm not even going to go with my butt job. You're going to have to take your button off tomorrow night and obey Big Brother. But I'm going to wear my button at some point, and they're going to have the cops remove me like last time. How dare they tell us what we can wear. Can't have props either. Can't use my props tomorrow night. No, sir. Tim Philp, rule number 12. We can't wear our buttons, and we can't show props. We've got to keep it dull for Tim Philp. The Philp rule. Rogers rule number 12, the Tim Philp rule. Dull and boring. Can't wear buttons, can't wear hat, can't use props, can't show press clippings. Gotta keep it fun, Tim Phelps way. He took me away four years ago for showing my button, had the cops take me away. Took it to the Supreme Court. You didn't hear about it, eh? Go check it out. Termel, Phelps, CRTC, Supreme Court. Yes, sir. So. You watch tomorrow night's debate, the fight over the button, because I'm going to put my button on at some point, and then the cops are coming to get me. Yes, sir. Anyway, we see. So who else has a button? Mr. Sless, make sure you bow and don't wear your button tomorrow night, Mr. Sless. Rogers has banned buttons. <laughs> I guess he's not hearing me. <laughs> What? I have a question for you. My question to you is this. Yeah, go ahead. Is if you have a youth who is not living at home. Who's not living at home. And they're wanting to find employment. How do they're you wanting to what? Find employment. Okay. How do you expect them to survive off your bus bucks? Well, let's just say that... Let's not deal with the people we can't help for a moment. But the thing is... No, 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 no. We're going to establish one thing. Are there some kids who are going to benefit by being able to clean a park and get, answer my first question and then I'll go to the next, promise. Are there some kids who will benefit by having a job cleaning a park or shoveling the snow with bus tickets? Who maybe now daddy can't give them an allowance no more. And if Junior goes and pays for the bus pass with work, daddy can now give him some cash instead of buying for the bus pass. My question is, my point is there are some people who will benefit. Now, to say, gee, everybody doesn't benefit, so we better not help the ones we will, 
is not wise. And now, the guy who is, like you say, strapped and homeless. I'm not even suggesting you're strapped and homeless. I'm looking well, at... That's pretty bad, isn't it? I'm looking at you have 60% of Brantford who are single parents who are living on Ontario Works. Right. Those kids don't need bus bucks because they can't afford. So you have to choose between whether you're going to pay the hydro or whether you're going to put food on the table. You have children who Yeah, but I'm going to have some stores taking bus bus. But you have children as well who can't afford to play sports in high school. Well, they can use bus bucks at the community surf community centers now. Isn't that a good answer? Come on now. If they're earning community currency, they can pay for the community center themselves. And every snowstorm, every dirty park, every old lady needs a dog walked counts. Every old lady, just sign my thank you note, that counts in the time banks around the world. It's a system where volunteer hours are counted as the currency. So, I, I, I don't think, need... I think fundamentally it's a good idea. Thank you. But fundamentally, fundamentally it is, but then you're looking but, at... But it's not, a, it's not something we can vote for you on. Well, but, but if somebody else were to adopt that as part of their thinking, <laughs> I think it would be good. Well, that's why I'm good. That's why I focus my campaign on the kids. I like to say that the parents who have either jobs or welfare aren't really interested in jobs for kids. They aren't. They're too busy surviving, paying for the kids, and frankly. What can I say? They're not even watching what's going on here. So when I go to the high schools and I pass out my flyers, I got a video, johntermell.com slash busbucks.mpg, where you can watch me for a half an hour asking the kids at the bus station, would you work for 12 bus bucks an hour? How many think you said no? One woman said my husband will work for 12 bus bucks an hour. So I'm saying that I'm going to empower every kid to find an old person, including their own grandma, Go put in an hour taking care of them, get them to sign IOU, and if that counts with every time bank around the world, like a standard good volunteer hour, well, if I get elected, it'll count for bus rides too, and if not, then you can spend them overseas, like I told you about. Even if Brantford doesn't honor Brantford youth student bucks, and even if the bus system doesn't take them, the rest of the world will honor Brantford youth work bucks. Need, eh? So I'm counting on the kids. I'm not counting on the adults who say I can't vote for you because you're not going to win. They think it's a horse race. They're trying to pick a winner. You got all the committed guys, and then you got the 50% who are the gamblers. They're trying to pick the winner, the guy with the most signs. And when they pick him and he wins, I won. <laughs> all right, I'm out of here. Time to go. Because no one wants to talk to me. No, sir. They're all set. I'm the guy with the white hard hat. Freaks them out. Okay. Anyway, I got on. It paid off. So, one last time around the room. See ya, everybody. I don't even have a table, but I gotta go. Bye. Alright.